Hello there, friendly neighbors, and welcome back to our channel. Andromeda very desperately wanted to be part of today's video. She's being a little bit of a And now she's in my video because she was begging for it and she kept biting my feet. So that's what you get. You bite mom's feet, you gotta be on camera. Yes, before the comments come flooding in, my green hair is no more. It was really, really past time for a re-dye on that and I have decided to go back to my roots of blue. This was actually supposed to be purple, but it looks more blue to me. So I'm just gonna say it's blue and I'm gonna pretend that was my intention all along. For the like sixth video in a row that I'm trying to film, my neighbors upstairs are doing construction. I don't know why it takes six weeks to do construction, but. Like literally, literally right above me is where they're doing it. Oh, they stopped. Maybe they heard me talking shit. For today's video, I wanted to sort of go back to the basics again for ferret ownership. I was just kind of struck by inspiration to make this video, not necessarily because of a particular anything, but just because there seem to be a lot of people out there who are now adopting ferrets and getting new ferrets, and I'm getting a lot of messages on Instagram from first-time ferret owners. Um, and I just think that, I don't know, this might be a good reference video for anyone who is thinking of buying a ferret or almost done preparing for a ferret and they wanna just make sure that they're ready, I guess. So this is gonna be 10 questions to ask yourself before getting ferrets. Make sure you watch this video all the way through because at the end of this video, I am going to be announcing what next month's Friendly Neighborhood Business Box theme is going to be. And let me tell you, I am very proud of this month. Everything going into the boxes this month, I think is like top tier. So if you haven't ordered one before, I very strongly recommend ordering one this month. Without further ado, I think it's time for me to actually get on with this list because I've been filming for six and a half minutes and I haven't actually started what this video is supposed to be about. So let's get to it. Ew. I like lowered my glasses so that the little ridge thing was like right in my nostrils. And then like I tried to pull it back up and I, <laughs> anyway, you guys don't care. Just onto the list, go do the video thing. The very first thing you need to ask yourself if you're planning to get ferrets is, have you done enough research? Research is the most important thing to do when it comes to getting any type of new animal because you wanna make sure that you're giving that animal the best life that you possibly can. So research includes pretty much everything to do with this animal, including diet, care requirements, expenses, lifestyle, ideal conditions, and then even more specific things like, are they legal where you live? And where's the closest veterinarian that you can get to for that specific animal? Of course, there's other things besides that, but those are just sort of the big ones that I can think of. And keep in mind that research means more than just Googling something and taking the first Google result you see as the answer. There's a lot of misleading information online. I think the best example of this is when you Google something like, is kibble good for dogs? The first four or five results for this are all super biased studies by science diet companies like Purina and Royal Canin, which in my opinion aren't good sources because they're super biased and they just want you to buy their products. That's a whole other subject that we're not gonna get into today because I just don't have time for it. So make sure that you're cross-referencing your research and you're taking it from multiple sources. Another great way to do research on a new type of animal is by talking to someone who has that type of animal. You can ask them about their experiences, if they think that this animal makes a good pet, any troubles that they've had. But just like cross-referencing research, make sure you're talking to more than just one person because who's to say that that one person you're talking to actually has the right information? It's possible that the person you're talking to isn't even really taking that good care of their pets and that's a problem because then you're getting misinformation from them. I'm not talking from personal experiences at all, am I? When it comes to research, the more research you've done, the more prepared you're gonna be for the animal that you're getting and the better pet parent you are going to be. So please, please make sure that if you are planning to get ferrets, that you have done as much research as you possibly can because you can never be too prepared. You really can't, especially with animal like ferrets, because they're weird. Let me tell you, ferrets be weird. The second thing that you should be asking yourself is, will I be able to provide enough free roam? Ferrets need both time and space when it comes to free roam, so they need at least eight hours outside of their cage every single day. I like to tell people to shoot for a little bit more. Personally, my ferrets free roam whenever I'm home and I'm awake, so that's normally between 12 and 14 hours of free roam every day. And of course, your ferrets also need a lot of space. It's not enough for you to just open their cage and give them like two square feet of space outside of their cage. Obviously, that's not gonna count even though they're 
technically not in their cage anymore. I really like to compare ferrets and cats because personally, as someone who's owned both of them, I think that cats and ferrets have a lot of similar mannerisms and care requirements. So what I'd recommend doing is see the space that you have for your ferrets and think to yourself, would this be comfortable living for a cat and would I feel all right keeping a cat in this space? If the answer is no, you probably aren't giving your ferrets enough space to free roam, so I really recommend trying to extend that amount of space. The third thing to ask yourself is, do I have enough time for ferrets? I have owned a lot of different types of animals in my lifetime, and I'm gonna tell you right away, ferrets are easily the pets that I've had to dedicate the most time to. They're just complicated little buggers, and they need a lot of your attention because they are constantly getting into trouble and it's really frustrating. So you're gonna be spending a lot of time doing a lot of different things for them. So this includes daily care and maintenance, feeding time, especially if you're raw feeding your ferrets, you gotta dedicate a lot of time to doing that, including meal prep and just feeding them every day takes a lot more time than just kind of putting kibble into a bowl. Playing with your ferrets, socializing with your ferrets, and daily ferret proofing. Because I guarantee you when you have a ferret, at least once a day, you're gonna find something that you either need to re-ferret proof or ferret proof for the first time because they figured out how to get into it or how to cause trouble, and they just hadn't figured that out before. That's how ferrets are. Nova recently learned how to open one of the kitchen cupboards that I didn't know that my ferrets knew how to open, so sometimes she just likes to go chill with our Tupperware. I had to get another baby lock. When it comes down to it with ferrets, there is absolutely no day off from ferret ownership. There will never come a time where you can just say, oh, I'm tired, I wanna take a me day, I just don't wanna have to deal with this right now, because you can't do that when you own ferrets. They're like toddlers, except cuter, and less annoying, and I'm actually gonna have them. Kids, in this economy? The fourth thing to ask yourself is, do I have enough money for ferrets? Ferrets are very, very expensive animals, and this is because they're an exotic pet and they are very prone to just every, every problem, every problem that a pet can have. Ferrets just love to have those. So you're gonna have to think about your initial expenses, which includes the cage supplies and first vet visit, as well as your daily, weekly, and monthly expenses. Stuff like food, supplies that need to be replaced often, and sometimes vet checkups, depending on your ferret. I have to go to the vet every single month with Nova to get her another Lupron injection because she has adrenal disease, and this normally costs me anywhere between $50 and $90. It depends on if she just needs the shot or if she also needs me to get a refill of her medication for insulinoma, because Nova also has insulinoma, which also costs me more money because I have to get her a blood sugar test every six months. It's a whole thing. Generally speaking, I spend around $200 to $250 a month on my ferrets, and that's when there isn't any sort of medical emergency. Between May and July, I spent about $1,500 on my ferrets because I had a bunch of medical emergencies just happen back to back. All of my ferrets somehow got ear mites. I do not know how. I needed to boost vaccines for all of my younger ferrets. Luna got a upper respiratory infection, and Nova was diagnosed with adrenal. It was just a big chunk of time with a lot of expenses going towards my ferrets, which is exactly why most people who own ferrets advocate very strongly for having an emergency fund saved up, which again just adds to the expenses of having ferrets and you asking yourself, do I have enough money? The fifth question to ask yourself is, am I getting more than one ferret? I think this is a very important one for me to put as its own bullet point because there are quite a few people online who are still claiming that it's okay to have only one ferret, and it's just not true. Ferrets are extremely, extremely social animals and they benefit so much from the bonds that they create with other ferrets. Of course, you are a social bond for them as well and you're gonna be paying attention to your ferret and playing with them lots and having a great fun time with them, but it's still not enough for just you to be the only social companion that your ferret has. Activities like wrestling together, sleeping with each other, even eating together are things that you don't really do with your ferret unless you wanna chow down on some raw chicken wings with your ferrets, which I, I wouldn't recommend doing. I kind of went on a vent about this in my uh, top 10 ferret toys video. So if you want to watch that and, and see my vent about that, watch that video because I go into a little more specifics about it, I guess. Number six to think about is, do I have the permission of other people who are living in my household? So if you're living with your family or roommates, it's really, really important to make sure that everyone in the household is on board with the idea of getting ferrets. Just like cats and dogs, ferrets do become household pets. So even though you're the one who's gonna be paying for it and taking care of it in the sense of feeding it, cleaning litter boxes and stuff like that, you still need to make sure that everyone in your house is a 
aware that there are going to be ferrets running around, there's going to be ferrets free roaming, and they're going to possibly need to change certain lifestyle habits that they have in order to accommodate that. When there are ferrets around, you have to be conscious about what's being left around the house, how clean your house is, and everything like that. So if you have a member of your family or a roommate who's kind of upset about having to clean up after themselves, well, honestly, I really don't think you should get ferrets. Maybe just hold off for a few years. You just don't want to be in a situation where your ferret gets into an emergency because of someone else's doing. Alex and I have to be really conscious about cleaning up socks that are left around the house because for some reason Andromeda really loves to choose socks. And only socks, nothing else, just socks. So if we lived in a household with other people, we would have to make sure that everyone was cleaning their socks up and no socks were being left out. And it's the little things like that that you've just got to make sure everyone's on board with. So just please communicate to the people that you're living with that there will need to be slight lifestyle changes, just like there would be if you're bringing a cat or a dog home. The seventh question to ask yourself is, where am I getting these ferrets from? Just like the question, am I getting more than one ferret, there's a lot of misinformation on the internet about getting ferrets from pet stores. I think in the last like year or so, there's been a big movement in the ferret community online to be super anti-pet store, and I love to see it. It's a great, great thing. But there's still a lot of people who don't realize how terrible pet stores are and how much you should not be supporting them. I've plugged this video a lot and I'm gonna plug it again, but if you haven't seen Patsu and Friends video on Marshall Farms, I really, really recommend watching that video. Bryn goes really into depth about why ferret mills are awful and why you shouldn't be supporting them. Even if your ferrets aren't from Marshall Farms, my ferrets are actually from Hagen Farms, which which is the Canadian ferret mill. The conditions that ferrets are kept in are pretty much the exact same all across North America and in Japan. So please make sure that you are either getting a ferret that's rescued or a ferret from a reputable breeder. And please, please make sure the breeder is reputable. Bryn also has a video on how to tell if a breeder is reputable, which will be linked down below. Go watch that video if you want to know more about how to pick out a good breeder. Because a bad breeder is just as bad as a ferret mill. The eighth thing to ask yourself is, am I prepared for a possible 10 year commitment? Ferrets can live anywhere between five and 10 years. So it's really important to be able to plan around that fact. If you are someone who's 15 or 16 years old and you wanna get a ferret, that's really awesome. But keep in mind that if you are planning to go to university, to move out of the house in the next couple of years, your ferret is something that you're gonna to have to think about. If you are a teenager and you wanna get ferrets, an easy way around this is to adopt a middle-aged or senior ferret. I have a very big soft spot in my heart for senior ferrets. I think that they are just the sweetest, most adorable things in the entire world. And a lot of ferret rescues have them because a lot of people don't want the older ferrets. They want the cute little baby ferrets. And I get that. Baby ferrets are cute. Lyra is probably the most adorable thing I've ever seen in the entire world. But nothing Lyra does will ever beat Nova's adorable old lady stretches in the morning and how badly she just wants to fall asleep in my lap. Where's Nova? I need her now. I'm talking about her. I need to go get her. Here she is. Hi baby, we were talking about you. We were talking about how precious you are. This is her favorite position. There. This is this is the chill position for Nova. I love you. What have I done to deserve you? The ninth question that you should be asking yourself is, what am I gonna do with my ferrets if slash when I travel? Vacationing with ferrets is something that has been a little bit tricky for me since I started getting ferrets. And normally I honestly just take them with me at this point because it's a lot easier than trying to find somewhere that will Ferrets are the type of animal, just like dogs, that do need to be watched over. So if you're traveling and you have ferrets, you can't really just leave them at home and expect them to be okay. So if you're traveling and you own ferrets, your options are basically board them, have someone house sit, or take them with you. Whenever Alex and I can, we choose to just take our ferrets with us, and I have made a video all about this process because I stress out a lot about my ferrets, especially certain ferrets that need medication twice a day, and I would rather just be able to watch them when I'm on vacation than trust someone else with that. So make sure that you have a backup plan for what you're gonna be doing with your ferrets if you are traveling. And the very last thing that you should be asking yourself if you wanna get a ferret is, do ferrets fit into my lifestyle? 
it's really, really easy to see a cute TikTok of a ferret and tell yourself, oh my god, I want that, that's so adorable. But there's a really big difference between the ferrets that you see on TikTok war dancing and speed bumping and actually owning ferrets. Ferrets are absolutely not the pet for everyone. And that's something that I've really come to know as I have delved deeper into the ferret owner community online. And there's nothing wrong with recognizing that as you're doing your research. There are plenty of animals that I don't think would fit into my lifestyle, which is exactly why I don't own them. I think birds is the biggest example of this. I think birds are absolutely gorgeous and I think that they're super cool, but I would never want one in my house because I just can't handle the specific type of care requirements that birds have. And that's just not something that I really want to be spending time doing. Whereas with ferrets, I actually really enjoy doing all the care that's required for them. I make a morning routine of giving them their food, cleaning up the house, cleaning their litter boxes. And it's actually something that I find really therapeutic and relaxing, but that's not the case for everyone. And that's okay because guess what? Every human being is different. The bottom line is don't be selfish with your pet ownership. Don't get a ferret just because you want a ferret. You have to also think about the ferret's life and if you're gonna be able to provide for them in the very specific way that ferrets need to be provided for. Well, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. This has been 10 questions to ask yourself before getting ferrets. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe because by doing all of those things, you too can become a citizen of a friendly neighborhood, which in my personal and professional opinion is the very best place that you can be. Wait, Kenya, what about the business boxes? You said that you'd reveal what business box theme it is this month. Don't worry, I didn't forget. I was getting to that. This month's friendly neighborhood business box theme is, I would do a drum roll, but I can't because I'm holding Nova and I find her a little bit more important. So I will add that sound effect in, in post. Thank God it's 2021. I don't think it's a big secret that 2020 has been a rough year for a lot of us. And I really am excited for it to be 2021. And I'm hoping that things start to change a little bit in 2021. I'm gonna go into it positively. This month's business box is reflecting that positivity and that celebration that we're gonna have when that new year hits. With this month's business box launching, I also do have some sort of good, sort of bad news for you guys. So uh, I'm just gonna share that right now. If you aren't interested in my business box talk, feel free to not watch the video anymore. Goodbye, it was nice having you. Thank you for the view, like, comment, and subscribe. On to the business boxes. I've been doing my business boxes for two months now, and I really consider those two months as more of a trial than anything set in stone, because I sort of wanted to see what this world of starting a small business, making my own store, selling stuff from home went. I learned a lot, I had some successes, and unfortunately I had some failures. The biggest failure is, I have not been making, um, any money. I made a whole 93 cents, I think, last month on my business boxes. And um, uh, as much as I would love to be able to keep giving you guys a product for a really cheap price, because I just, I like being able to do that. The amount of time that I put into these business boxes is not worth 93 cents. I'm gonna be completely honest to you guys. I spend a lot of time working on them. So unfortunately, because of that, my prices are going to be going up. But with my prices going up, I'm actually going to now be selling two different business boxes. I'm gonna be selling one that is still at the $20 rate that my business boxes currently are at, and then I'm gonna be selling a second one at $35. The difference between these two boxes is actually gonna be pretty minuscule. The $35 box is going to have all of the same things in it that has been in my previous boxes, whereas the $20 box will have everything in it except for the handmade good. So that means that they're still gonna include the exact same toy, art item, treats, and bonus item, with the exception of that handmade good. I really want to express my gratitude to the people who have been ordering my business boxes. I do have quite a few people who have ordered both of them and have told me that they're planning to order the third. And I just really, really appreciate you guys so much because it has been so much fun to put these together. And I really hope that the change in cost isn't something that is going to affect your impression of me. I promise I'm not doing it because I'm greedy. I'm doing it because sewing for 15 hours a week is not worth 93 cents a month. It just isn't. And at this point, it's either I stop making them completely, which I don't want to do, or I simply raise my prices. So if you are interested in buying the Thank God It's 2021 Friendly Neighborhood Business Box, they will be posted to my Etsy. I will also be sharing it on Twitter, Instagram, and here on YouTube. They will be up on December 1st, which is Tuesday, I believe. Anyway, I feel like I've uh, chatted on for long enough, so I'm gonna stop now. Um, yeah, so thank you guys for watching today's video. I will see you guys next week when I do something else. I'm not quite sure what, I don't, I don't plan that far.
our head ever for anything. Well, except my business boxes. I've got those planned until like July. Let me tell you, we got some good stuff coming. Okay, I'm gonna slowly wheel myself out of frame now because I wanna go make some lunch. Goodbye. Of course, the I'm quitting YouTube.